Please close your eyes and open your hands. Now imagine what you could place in your hands. An apple, maybe your wallet. Now open your eyes. What about a life? What you see here is a premature baby. He looks like he's resting peacefully, but in fact he's struggling to stay alive because he can't regulate his own body temperature. This baby is so tiny he doesn't have enough fat on his body to stay warm. Sadly, 20 million babies like this are born every year around the world. Four million of these babies die annually. But the bigger problem is that the ones who do survive grow up with severe long-term health problems. The reason is because in the first month of a baby's life, its only job is to grow. If it's battling hypothermia, its organs can't develop normally, resulting in a range of health problems from diabetes to heart disease to low IQ. Imagine, many of these problems could be prevented if these babies were just kept warm. That is the primary function of an incubator. But traditional incubators require electricity and cost up to $20,000, so you're not going to find them in rural areas of developing countries. As a result, parents resort to local solutions like tying hot water bottles around their babies' bodies or placing them under light bulbs like the ones you see here, methods that are both ineffective and unsafe. I've seen this firsthand over and over again. On one of my first trips to India, I met this young woman, Savita, who had just given birth to a tiny premature baby, Rani. She took her baby to the nearest village clinic, and the doctor advised her to take Rani to a city hospital so she could be placed in an incubator. But that hospital was over four hours away, and Savita didn't have the means to get there. So her baby died. Inspired by this story and dozens of other similar stories like this, my team and I realized what was needed was a local solution, something that could work without electricity, that was simple enough for a mother or a midwife to use, given that the majority of births still take place in the home. We needed something that was portable, something that could be sterilized and reused across multiple babies, and something ultra-low cost compared to the $20,000 that an incubator in the U.S. costs. So this is what we came up with. What you see here looks nothing like an incubator. It looks like a small sleeping bag for a baby. You can open it up completely. It's waterproof. There's no seams inside, so you can sterilize it very easily. But the magic is in this pouch of wax. This is a phase change material. It's a wax-like substance with a melting point of human body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. You can melt this simply using hot water. And then when it melts, it's able to maintain one constant temperature for four to six hours at a time, after which you simply reheat the pouch. So you then place it into this little pocket back here, and it creates a warm microenvironment for the baby. Looks simple, but we've reiterated this dozens of times by going into the field to talk to doctors, moms, and clinicians to ensure that this really meets the needs of the local communities. We plan to launch this product in India in 2010, uh, and the target price point will be $25, less than 0.1% of the cost of a traditional incubator. Over the next five years, we hope to save the lives of almost a million babies, but the longer-term social impact is a reduction in population growth. This seems counterintuitive, but it turns out that as infant mortality is reduced, population sizes also decrease, because parents don't need to anticipate that their babies are going to die. We hope that the Embrace Infant Warmer and other simple innovations like this represent a new trend for the future of technology. Simple, localized, affordable solutions that have the potential to make huge social impact. In designing this, we followed a few basic principles. We really try to understand the end user, in this case, people like Savita. We try to understand the root of the problem rather than being biased by what already exists. And then we thought of the most simple solution we could to, to address this problem. In doing this, I believe we can truly bring technology to the masses, and we can save millions of lives through the simple warmth of an embrace. Traffic is a global epidemic. US traffic is creating 45% of the world's air pollution. In the UK, time wasted in traffic costs 20 billion a year. 
Would you pay for cleaner air and a faster commute? Stockholm put it to a vote. I voted for it, yes. I voted for it. I vote for it. We're not old enough to vote. Vote. <laughs> We had to do something in Stockholm to improve the environment and to get a better flow in the traffic. We put a price on taking your car into the central parts of Stockholm and we call that congestion charges. If you start a system like this and it doesn't work on the first day, then you will be in big trouble. It must be perfect from day one. There are 18 entry gates to the city. Each is equipped with cameras. Pictures are taken of the rear and front license plates. These pictures are sent to a central system that identifies the license plates and makes sure that the right person pays for the right passages. One of the obstacles we overcame was the OCR, the optical character reading of the license plate. We went out to IBM's global organization and the R&D centers and find a very good software we could use. And we managed to implement it in two months' time. This is the heart of the system where all images and passages are being processed. Over 99% of all pictures are correctly identified. No, it's nice. This is how it should be all the time. Behind me you can see the traffic, and the clock is 6 p.m. Before we had the congestion charging, the traffic was queuing up at this time of the day. I think it's a good idea, because I think that we should take care of the environment in the city. The traffic went down with about 22%, and the air pollution was about 14% better. It's a huge international interest from different parts of the world, from uh, the United States, from Latin America, from China. And it's really a pressure to tell people not what we are planning to do, but what we actually have done in Stockholm. I voted for it. Yes, I did. Not my husband, so <laughs> but I did. I think he is not thinking like me for the future. I'm thinking for the children and the grandchildren.